Hey, what's up guys, David Cohen here for Learn Now Effects and welcome back to another exciting Fusion tutorial. Today, we're going to be taking a look at how to make this audio spectrum visualizer inside of the Vint Resolve Cube using a brand new free plugin from Reactor. So let's check it out. So before you get started, you want to install three free fuses from Reactor. The first one is Audio Waveform, the second one is Xglow, and the third one is Tintensity. So once you install all of these, you want to restart the Vint Resolve, and then we can get started. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my audio file, and this is, it has to be a WAV track, .wav, and you can convert a regular MP3 with the Vint Resolve, just drag an MP3 here and render audio only in the delivery tab and make sure to select the format as wave and 16 pcm so i'm just going to drag the track onto the timeline and i'm going to create a new fusion composition it doesn't matter what the length is right now so i'm just going to drag it here and i'm going to bring the cti here to the end so it'll be easier i'm just going to drag the fusion composition until it's the same length as our music so I'm just going to select the composition and we can head on over to Fusion. So once we're in the Fusion tab, I'm going to take the Media Out node and I'm going to drag it to the corner here. Right click anywhere on the grid and you can select Arrange Tools to Grid. This will make sure that our tools don't get mixed up. And the next one, I'm going to go to Options and select Orthogonal Pipes. You just click on it and it will make everything a lot easier to navigate here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring audio waveform and this is a really uh, impressive fuse by my friend Gerald aka GP his first ever post in the WSL forum and he just lets this out on everyone and everyone's very impressed I'm very impressed with this fuse he put a lot of detail in it and the best part about this at least in my opinion is that the messages come on the screen if there's an error like it says please load audio file right now because there's no audio file if there's if the audio file is too long it's too large, then it will load the audio file is too large, it'll write here. If it's an uncompatible format, it'll also write it here. And this is like very, very, very important because a lot of people don't know what the problem is. It just like in my previous tutorial, the nodes just became red and no one knew what was the problem. And it was just that the format is uncompatible. And I really thank him for this. This is amazing, very impressive. So the first thing you wanna do you want to load your audio file. So I have my track here. It's already navigated to the right directory. So I'm just going to load it. And the, the thing is, it has to be smaller than 50 megabytes. This is, this is the cache of this fuse because it caches it actually. And it has to be smaller than 50 megabytes. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the spectrum tab here. And I'm just going to enable the spectrum. And FFT, I'm going to select 1024. I want to bring the scale down a little bit like that. And appearance, I want to bring to needles. That's pretty good. And this equidistant cuts, I want to enable. And I want to bring the steps to probably to three. That's pretty good. So if we play this, you'll see that it looks pretty good. So one thing I want to do is I'm going to go here and I'm going to turn on the filter. Now, this filter makes the spectrum look different. All the time so if I select this it'll just be this part of the spectrum this one is the one I'm going to be using right now and you have this also but I like the one in the middle 300 to 3000 Hertz is pretty good I'm gonna go back to the spectrum tab and I'm gonna bring the scale a little higher because I'm a little low here so that looks pretty good I like it now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab a transform node I'm gonna view it and I'm going to set it to flip vertically. Now I'm just going to bring this Y value of the center to zero, and you'll see that it'll just become in the middle here. That's pretty good. So let's just select here and see what it looks like. So as you can see, we can see our little points. Looks very nice, I like it. 
So the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to, if you go here, you'll see this looks very nice. So I'm going to add an X glow after this. This is a fuse by my friend Brian Ray. Very nice fuse, very realistic fall off of the glow. And I like this one very much. If you follow my tutorials, you'll see that I use it a lot. I'm just going to bring the color to blue, but you can use any color you want. You can select like red, give it a nice red look. But for this tutorial, I'm going to go with blue because I like it. I like the way it looks. So I'm just going to bring the glow down. And what I want to do is I want to merge this onto a black background. So that looks very nice. Blue on black, very nice. The audio spectrum looks amazing. Plays back very quickly, but to make it play back even quicker, you right click here on this bar and turn off high quality. And that will just make it a little quicker, as you can see. It's actually much quicker. So I'm just going to bring this media out to the corner here so it doesn't get in my way. And I'm going to take a text plus tool. And I'm going to type, you would usually type the name of the bands, but I'm going to type the name of my brand. So learn now FX. And I'm going to type the name of the song you would type usually, but I'm going to type audio visualizer tutorial. And these fuses are completely free. You can get them on Reactor, which is a free plugin manager for DaVinci Resolve Fusion. And you, if you want, you can support the authors. They have an option for a donation to support them. And this is actually very, very nice fuses. The X-Glow and the Audio Waveform is very impressive. Thank you very much to the Gerald GP from WSL. Very nice. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to view the text to get back to the tutorial. So this font doesn't look very impressive, doesn't look very nice with this. We need a font that will complement our audio visualizer. So I'm going to select Bang Gothic, MD, BT, and this is a whole family of fonts, as you can see, Bang Gothic. And these are very, very commonly used fonts in things like um, Marvel's Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. It has them on the banner, if you haven't noticed this font. A lot of places use this font, it gives it like an edgy look, very like high-tech, very nice. So. To get this to look even better, I'm just going to right click and select character level styling. This is a trick I learned from my friend, Billy Ripka. And I'm just going to select this lower text on the screen. And as you can see, we have this. I want to bring the size a little bit down like that, maybe a little bit smaller. Control or command on your keyboard and that will make the iteration smaller. So you have more control over the slider. So that's pretty good. I like this. I'm just going to merge this over here. That's nice. I'm just going to use the merge node, keep it selected, and we're going to move this around. We want to scale it, position it, give it a nice size and position. All right. So this position is pretty good. Maybe make it a little bit lower. That's nice. Now we're just going to make a simple counter here. And a lot of people are saying that Fusion doesn't have enough expressions. You can't make a counter and stuff like that. But I want to show you that there's you don't need expressions in Fusion to get counter. It's a lot easier than you think. So I'm just going to bring the font back to Bang Gothic MD BT. And I'm just going to right click and I'm going to select time code. Now this is a modifier. All of the things you have here, these are all modifiers for the text. And these are amazing modifiers. They're like expressions, but they have sliders that you can use to control the parameters. And they're much easier to control than expressions. These are one of the strengths that Fusion has over After Effects. So I'm going to select time code and I'm going to go to the modifiers again. So I don't want hours and I don't want frames. If we look at this in the viewer, you'll see that we have this very cool futuristic counter going on. Initially, it looked like this, which is also pretty cool, but it's not very useful when it comes to a song. You want to measure seconds and minutes, but not hours or frames. So this looks pretty good. And it starts from zero. As you can see, the first frame is zero and then becomes one. So this is exactly what we need. And you have a lot of things in that modifier that can help you control it. So I'm going to take this text plus and I'm going to move this here over here to the corner. And I want to make it smaller. It's too large right now. So that's pretty good. I could use the guides to center this out, make this even better. So you hold down control on your keyboard and you can use that. But this is pretty good. I like how it looks. 
So the last thing I want to do is I want to add some particles. And the particles, can you can make them differently. There are two different ways to make them. One of them is better and one of them is faster. So you choose whichever one you want. So I'm going to take a background and I'm going to make it white. I'm going to take a polygon. Polygon and over here. And I'm going to just draw two points. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight right now. We'll fix this right now. So I'm going to click this little arrow over here to modify. I want to select these two points. Shift P, and that will publish the points so we can actually see their positions on in the control panel. So this has to be 0, and this one has to be 0 0.5. This one has to be 1, and this one has to be 0.5. As you can see, it's perfectly straight now. Just gives you a second to straighten it. Yeah, there it is. If we turn on the guides, it's actually drawn right over the guides. So I'm just going to pipe this into the background and you won't see anything. So I need to go to the polygon and uncheck solid, hold down control or command on your keyboard and bring the slider up, make a nice thin line. So this is pretty good. I like how it looks. Now I'm going to grab a particle emitter and a particle render. I'm going to set the output to 2D. And that's it. And I'm going to go to the particle emitter Bring the number down probably to 3. Number variance 0.1. Lifespan I want to bring down probably to 30. And region, we're going to go to the region tab. I'm going to select bitmap instead of sphere. So as you can see, we have a new input for the, for the particle emitter. And this is the region bitmap. So I'm going to pipe this into here. And if we look at the particle render, we'll see that we have our particles, but they're not moving. We want them to be going down for this tutorial. So I'm just gonna add P directional force, but this will just add too much gravity to the particles. If I turn on the black background, you'll see how quickly they're falling. I wanna go to the particle P directional force, and I'm gonna go to the conditions tab. I wanna bring the probability down to 0 0.25. As you can see, the particles are falling a lot slower and a lot nicer. But I want to add some color to these particles. I don't want them to be some blend white. Of course, you could go to the particle style tab. You could go to the color controls and choose the color. That's one way of doing it. But I see that it's faster to do this with our intensity fuse. So you could try using a color corrector, but it won't work. As you can see, if you plug this in, you'll see that even if you set this to blue, the particles just don't change. They don't care. What the particle emitter, what the color corrector does to them. But if we add intensity and set the color to blue, they become blue. I want to bring up the vibrance and I want to bring up the post gain to give it like a little bit of glow. If we zoom out, we see we have these little twinkling blue lights. Now, Alternatively, this is this fast way of doing it, and this is the way I would recommend to do it. But if you want it to look a little bit better and your song is not very long, you would take this audio waveform after the transform, and you would pipe this into the bitmap input instead of this line that we drew. This is just a little rudimentary thing we did, and not a lot of people will even notice it, but the best way to do it would be that. If your song isn't long, that's what I would recommend you to do. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to bring these nodes up so they don't get in our way. And I'm going to merge these particles, the last, this intensity on our final thing here, on our visualizer. So what we have going on is a visualizer with particles. So it can be, the playback can be pretty slow, but once this caches, it actually plays back very quickly. I had playback in almost real time after the cache in the edit tab. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pipe this into the media out and I'm going to go to the edit tab. As you can see, it's going to appear almost instantly. It looks very nice. I like how this came out. I'm really impressed by this fuse and there are a lot of things going on inside the fuse and there are a lot of things you can do with this. So if you guys want, I can make a couple more tutorials using this fuse. I mean, I really haven't done that yet by making a few tutorials about the same thing, but this just has so much potential, so many possibilities you can do with this. 
I might as well make a couple more tutorials. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below if you want more tutorials about this or not. And if you have any questions, you can email me directly. My email is david at learnnowfakes.com. And if you like this tutorial, please subscribe and hit the like button and share with your friends. Until next time, I'm David Cohen. This is Learn Now Fakes, and I'll see you next week.